Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans. It's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. Saints taking on Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. From a city that's played host to 10 Super Bowls, here's a look inside the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans. This is what it looked like just a moment ago in the heart of New Orleans. Folks, there's no place for this noise to go in the Superdome. It is loud, and these fans are ready for football as their Saints get ready to do battle with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. First try on offense for the Bucs and their veteran quarterback, Tom Brady. And what I'm looking for from him today, the things every quarterback is looking to do, lead his team to a victory. Doesn't matter whether he's throwing it, running it, handing it off, however he has to do it, as well as exhibiting some leadership, that's what he's trying to accomplish. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Here's Ronald Jones, first carry for the USC man. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two. And it brings up second down. <laughs> I know we can't hear what's going on in that huddle right now, but I'll guarantee you at least one offensive lineman is saying, my bad, we simply couldn't move him off the line of scrimmage. We've got to do a better job trying to root those guys out of there. From the 22, Brady. There's the Penn State man, it's Chris Godwin. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. First down. Well, they brought the pressure, and that meant man coverage behind him, so he's still able to complete the pass. Even as he took the hit, and that's what you have to do, because I was just talking with a coach the other day, and he said, look, it's not always going to be pretty back there. You're going to have to give me completions. Even when you're taking some hits, sometimes you have to be your own blitz control, for lack of a better term. Got to make completion, step up and make those throws, and he did that. Brady now on first down. Quickly to Gronkowski. That's caught. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 11 more on that one and another first down. And I put my first tally mark next to the Brady to Gronk counter here. I think it may be the first of many because once they get going, look out. Things tend to snowball. Tom Brady trusts Gronk as much as any receiver I think he's thrown to in his career. And it's evident and when you see that. And that's saying something. That's saying something right there. But he's earned it. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. So some holding over on the left side of that O-line. And I know for the guys trying to move those big defensive people, they'd love for them to stay in one spot. But they move around so quick and so fast that sometimes you just have to grab them. After the penalty, it's Jones. Room to run inside the 40. And all the way down to the 25-yard line. 
Malcolm Jenkins on the tackle. For as big and strong as some of these guys are, especially when you see them in first pass, it is sometimes hard to appreciate how truly fast they can move. That was incredible. And that's the kind of play where you have to kind of catch your breath afterwards and just give me a second here because when he shifted into high gear, he was an absolute blur out there. No substitute for speed. We talk about that all the time. The evidence was right there. And if you look at the next-gen stats, you'll see that he topped out at an even 21 miles an hour. On first and 10, here's Brady. And incomplete as he was knocked as he threw it. And it took the ball off course. Pressure, and that's certainly going to be a key to this game going forward. And that time, they were able to get in there and influence the throw. And remember, quarterbacks got to get rid of it. They don't have the tuck rule that they can fall back on anymore. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. To throw again, Brady. That's caught by the big tight end, O.J. Howard. And out of bounds right around the 20. Five yards, now it's third and five. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end. A guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills, you want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. Open man got one. It's complete. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes this one down to the 15. A five-yard pass on the heels of a five-yard run. Good enough for the first. That throw is not going to get them a whole lot, but that really didn't matter, did it? They got what they needed on that throw. Picked up the first down, and I'm going cliche here. Game of inches, partner. Absolutely. Well, and you talked to me a lot about opening drives, how key those are to set the tone. You kept the drive alive. Third down conversion here is big. Line of scrimmage, the 15, it's first and 10. Again, they'll throw with Brady. This will be caught at about the six. And he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. Tom Brady with a touchdown pass to Chris Gowan. And the Bucs take the ball down the field and score on their opening drive. Personally, for him, a great opening drive. He had three catches, including the touchdown. That felt like tremendous scouting, great film watching, and creating a game plan to start this off, not only to get him involved, but to send a message to the defense. You can have a lot to handle in this one. Ryan Suckup on for the point after. gives the Bucks a 7 to nothing lead. So that drive in total 8 plays. And it ends with a touchdown for the Bucks. Touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. This taken in about four yards deep. And we will not see a run back here from Harris. Now we see quarterback Drew Brees in his New Orleans offense set to go on attack here for the first time. Total relentlessness of consistency. Almost like a machine if you watch him in practice after every throw. He resets his feet, visualizes all the other options on a play. So if he has to do it in a game, it's already there, has the muscle memory. I start calling him AI for artificial intelligence. Whatever defense does during a game, he absorbs it and then uses it against them as the game moves on. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. He'll throw from the gun. He gets this one complete to Traquan Smith. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Brandon, to me, what's important right here on this drive is for them to get at least two first downs. They've got to give their defense a chance to settle down, catch their breath a little bit after they give up a touchdown on the opening drive. Touchdown. 
It's a jet sweep. Sanders trying to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. The first carry now, this is Alvin Kamara. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Give him the third down conversion, five yards on the play. Plenty of things to talk about here, partner, but to me, their defense gave up a touchdown on the first drive. How about how they're responding, coming back? That's a big third down pickup to keep their drive alive. toward the midway point in quarter one. Staying on the ground on first with Kamara. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. But from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. Let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains, that means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what you're looking for when you're playing defense. From the 40 now on second down, Breeze. And that's going to be too high, out of bounds and incomplete. Love the idea, love the concept, but you got to leave a little room on the sideline so he can fade into it when he makes the catch. That was thrown too close to it for the receiver to make a play. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. From the gun, it's Breeze. Got a man and he hits him in stride. And he's going to come up a few yards short. Brought down at the 45. Five yards and that means they come up short as they're going to have to punt here on the opening drive. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up. Keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. Here's Thomas Morstead on now to punt it away on fourth down. Back deep, Jadon Mickens. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line, absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five, superb. and kind of tipping their hand at running the ball. Three tight ends are out there. They'll start out on the ground with Jones. And they'll bring him down right around the 13. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll make it second and a foot or so. Part, I remember a coaching friend of mine used to tell his running backs before games, make sure you run and jog with your offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking when those big behemoths start to create space for you up front. He did a pretty good job of just following those guys through there for a nice explosive run. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. That was well defended. They clamped down on every available receiver. Just got to give the win to the defense on that snap. An incomplete pass on second down leads us to third and inches. They'll try and run for it with Jones. And he will have the first down as he's up to his 17-yard line. 
It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us. That shouldn't be an issue. And then the next part they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there, didn't we? Important to do, especially early in the game like they have. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. And they'll keep on the ground with Jones. And he's taken down. It's a gain of three from the 17 to the 20. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Second and seven from the 20. Brady gives this one off to Jones. Now a flag comes in from the umpire after a gain of about four. And this looks like it's going to be holding. That one whistled against a big right tackle. You'd think being able to fire out and block would be a lot easier to not commit a holding penalty, but it's tough to keep those guys right in front, isn't it? Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. Brady now to throw. A quick pass here to Godwin. That's a gain of 11. Would have been a first down if not for that penalty moments ago. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. On third down, here's Jones. And yeah, this is going to be a Bucks first down as he's got this up to about the 34-yard line. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going, and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards, but also like what the runner's given us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. After the run by Jones, here's first and ten. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. That good for 22 and a first down. One thing's for sure, this defense has to figure out how to stop the ground game. He's eating him up here in the first quarter. It looks like they have to go to different forces, aren't they? The conventional things aren't working too well. So I remember a coach of mine saying way back when, when a back's having a great game, you've got to get the ball out of his hands. See how far he can run without the ball. And what he meant was takeaways, knock it loose, because maybe you can't just stop him with just regular tackling. Brady now on first down. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. The running back, Leonard Fournette, his intended receiver. And now it's second down. The touch and time here critical for those types of throws. He put a lot of zip on that one. Needed just a little bit more finesse trying to get it to his back. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. again Brady and that'll be incomplete took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in couldn't hang on third down normally you think the tight end is going to be able to catch the football and handle that contact but in this case maybe a little too much target to hit that one was timed well incomplete This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Now Brady. 
Looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. Yeah, he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. Brady finding Godwin there for a Buccaneer first. It's almost as if they didn't leave the field after their first drive. They picked right up where they left off. Another good throw there. And this offense humming here in the early going. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Again, it's Brady. And they're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. Incomplete on the throwaway. Marshawn Lattimore there defensively. Here's second and 10 now from about the 32. To throw again, Brady. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. 11 yards on the pickup, and this long drive is going to continue as they move the chains again. Well, we know he has pretty good hands on display there. In fact, he only needed one of them. Yeah, nowadays, all these receivers work on this, right? They do the one-handed catches off the machine in practice. They do it with their quarterbacks. They do it contested, uncontested. They make it part of their repertoire. First down is Brady. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Chris Godwin that time. And that'll bring up second down. That is the first time that they've targeted him that he has not come down with a catch. He's caught everything that's been thrown his way. A dominant pass receiver that can break down any defense because when he's doing that kind of work, it really hurts you on the back end. And even though it's an incompletion there, I think they're going back to that well. Brady will try again on second down. That's complete to his running back, Evans. And he is out of bounds. Looks like right at the 15. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Timing is everything, and they work on this cut all the time. They work on all the timing patterns, and this time it paid off for them. Worked him to the center of the field, cut it to the outside. Ball's delivered. Gets both feet down for the completion. Brady going to try and throw on third down. Fifty hit. Taken down at the 21. Tom Brady sacked. Oh so that time, Charles, a uh, quarterback helpless really in the pocket in the face of a pass rush like that. They were on him instantly. Yeah, that's one where you turn to your line and say, uh, guys, can I get a little help here? And you have to ask politely because remember, they're blocking for you the entire game. But as a quarterback, you've also got to have the clock running in your head when you need to get rid of the football. But this time, he had no chance. They were on him instantly. And as we check the next-gen stats, you'll see he had precious little time to do anything with the football there. A 38-yard attempt. And the 11-year veteran banks it through. And the lead moves to 10 zip. Saints nothing. So that drive began at their own three. They wind up getting three out of it. And to me, the mentality to begin the drive, that was probably the key to everything. Let's just make sure we take care of the football, give ourselves some room, and maybe punt it away. Instead, it started at the three, and it ended with three points. Turn Deontay Harris. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. At their own 20. New Orleans Saints, they get ready to set up shop for their second drive. Nothing for them yet from an offensive standpoint. Down 10 zip as they come up first and 10.
Shotgun now for Breeze. And the catch made. This is Emmanuel Sanders. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. So quickly all the way up at the 40-yard line. Off the play fake to Kamara, it's Breeze. Rush coming and he's taken down. Devin White gets him for a loss of 10 yards from his linebacker spot. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability and a sack resulted. So now 20 yards to go on second down after the sack. Work to be done. Another try after the first down sack. Breeze, and it's hauled in by Jared Cook. It'll be a pickup of 15. It's out of lead to third down. And that was yardage that they needed there after the sack on first down. They didn't get all of it back. But now they look at third down as a manageable situation, one that they have a much better chance of picking up. The Bucs with an extra defender now in the secondary here on third down. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. Got a man, he finds Sanders. And he is going to have a Saints first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. We can talk about it like it's just a basic route, but how about the timing on this one? Lined up on the right, runs a deep in route, and how about the throw? Right on the money. Bam, puts it right in there and on his hands. Nice completion, really good pickup. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10, right at the 40. Now Breeze. That's complete to his running back, Kamara. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. I believe I could see what they were trying to do there, but unfortunately, the back ran out of room. Too close to the sideline. And for defenders, we're often taught 11 on the field, those sidelines can become the 12th defender. It worked to the defense's advantage on that play. And boy, that one drops incomplete, but if he was hit a fraction sooner, it may have been a fumble. When defenses get to the quarterback that quickly, a lot of times it's called a jailbreak. It wasn't quite that fast, but fast enough that he had no time to look downfield and set himself to throw the ball. And as he tried to do that, he was hit and it forced an incompletion. Now Breeze on third down. Out of the backfield, that's complete to Kamara. And he is going to have a Saints first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Great way to convert on third down there. 21 yards the play. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Throwing on first down is Breeze. Go down, back at the 26-yard line. JPP cruising in for the sack that time. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. So after a rare misstep on this drive, they'll try to make amends on second and 15. 
Another try after the first down sack. Breeze. And on the catch right side, this is Sanders. That was the ninth play of the drive, and they pick up nine yards with it. That's a gain of nine. Makes it third and five. The Saints on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This will be third and five. To throw is Breeze. That's caught. It's Thomas. The Saints touchdown. Drew Breeze to Michael Thomas. And the Saints are back within a score. Those are the touchdowns that are just scored on Sundays or on Monday night. Those are the ones that are scored during the week because they had that preparation in a great route run. Oh, I love that observation because you don't just roll out on game day and say, okay, go run this route and let's get it done. That means exactly what you said. The practice had to occur beforehand, which led to the timing, which led to the touchdown. Will Lott's on for the point after. And they're back with a field goal. It's 10-7 now. So that was a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it all culminates in a Saints touchdown. as he's marked out officially at the 21. At their own 21 yard line. And this offense trotting back onto the field. Let's turn our attention here to Ronald Jones. And it may just be the second quarter, but he's in his own well on his way to eclipsing that 100 yard mark. And when a back has a game, as we're witnessing right now, his name's gonna be in the books, but it's really a collective deal, isn't it? Because that the means he's getting plenty of blocking. A lot of help from his teammates, but he's making the most of it. Yeah, he's made the most of it to this point. Brady going to bring the Bucks up with a first and 10 at their own 21. The LSU man, Leonard Fournette, born right here in New Orleans. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 in the first down. Pardon, if you want more carries, I think we saw how you get him. Showed that he's got the fresh legs, and he picked up the first down on that run. Get the football. First and ten, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. Back to the ground, this time with Jones. And he'll run straight into a wall of tacklers at the line of scrimmage. It's second down. They bring the blitz, and it's not always the initial blitzers that make the play. In this case, the blitzers actually took up the blocking. How about the guy in the middle, though? Reading his keys right on the spot, stops him at the line of scrimmage. Looking to throw on second down. Brady, he'll set up the screen to Fournette. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. Yeah, yeah, we don't. I think it's fair to say there's nothing that gets around to its feet quite like a big play, and that was something special there. Boy, was he moving. And that's the kind of play where you have to kind of catch your breath afterwards and just give me a second here because when he shifted into high gear, he was an absolute blur out there. No substitute for speed. We talk about that all the time. The evidence was right there. And if you're wondering how fast he was going, Next Gen Stats clocked him at close to 21 miles an hour. So in Saints territory now, here's first and 10 at the 46. Here's Brady. That's complete to his receiver, Godwin. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. Well, they'll get the yardage, but they hate to see him take that hit. They're always trying to cool off. A big-time guy throwing the ball. 
but you have to know when to back off, pull up, and not hit him. There's the penalty. So now a fresh set of downs, first and 10 after roughing the passer. Working from the gun, it's Brady. He's going to go up top for the end zone. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds, incomplete. Mike Evans, the one he was looking for. And that'll bring up second down. Tremendous field position there and a perfect time to do exactly what they did. Take a shot at the end zone. And they went for the big play, just unable to complete it. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and 10. Throwing again, Brady. Again for Evans, this time he's got him. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Brings up third down. The Bucks on third down. They've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. They're up against a third and one situation. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. Oh, Fournette loses it. It's out. And this is picked up by the Saints. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. He was trying to do anything he could to get that final little bit for the first down. Instead, he lost the ball. Yeah, and he was short of the first down, but not by much. Trying his best, as you noted, to get there. Sometimes that extra effort can cost you. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And that last drive, so effective in the passing game, resulting in the touchdown. Maybe not many people were focused on the trenches. There was good protection there. Excellent protection. So now, defensively, you've almost got to get down into those starters blocks like you're a sprinter. Get lower than those guys on offense and find a way to roar through them or around them to get into the face of the passer. Easier said than done, though. Way easier said than done. But they've got to try something because right now they're just cutting them to shreds. the 15 it's first and 10 now after the fumble recovery it's Brady that's complete right around the eight and all the way down inside the five to the four it's a good gain of 11 sets him up first and goal two minutes remaining in the first half 10-7 our score Time rolls around. Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. And he hauls it in for a Buccaneer touchdown. Tom Brady to his old Patriot pal, Rob Gronkowski. And the Bucs are going to add on to their lead. But well, what a quick turnaround there. They get the football. Next play, boom, touchdown. I've been in a situation before where a turnover occurs, and if you're over on the bench with your defensive mate and you talk about what to do on your next series, and all of a sudden you hear sudden change, you've got to get out on the field and defend right away. Not everyone is mentally prepared to go. Is that what is yelled on the sidelines a lot of times? That, among other things. <laughs> Maybe some words we can't Orange share here. Yeah, we'll, we'll just keep this one PG. FCC violation. No doubt. It's good to make it 17-7. Well, they got the ball in great field position. One play later, boom, end zone. Saints 7.
Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. And he returns this to the 22. On the returns, the Saints take over first and 10 at their own 22 yard. Getting line. set to go again here, the Saints and Drew Brees march out there again on offense. Been a decent start for him here in this first half, but bottom line, his team's losing. They got to fix something. And it starts with him. He has to keep that little quarterback strut going right now to make sure that his team sees him as confident continue to try and up his game, but just let him know, hey, if I'm around, if I'm the one calling signals and throwing the football, just follow me, we'll get there. Sometimes that will do more to elevate a team than anything else. See if he has that confidence. They're throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. It's almost human nature, isn't it? They score on one play, you come out on offense, you try and do exactly the same thing. They tried the deep ball, couldn't quite connect, but give them an A for effort. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. From the gun, it's Breeze. This is complete to Michael Thomas. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 16 yards, a first down. Had to put that ball in there with a little extra zip, but he put it right where it needed to be. Yeah, and that little extra pace that he had on the pass, that required a little extra concentration for him, didn't it? Ball can get on you pretty quick in that manner, and he handled it well and picked up the first down. Breeze's throw on target to Cook. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there were more people there to get him down. again on second down. Breeze. And he'll get this one underneath to Kamara. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Now we'll get a quick timeout called by New Orleans. Number two. As they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. First and 10 here, and you know, if they could just get three out of this, something about whittling it to a one-score game in half that might provide a psychological boost. Gets this to a standout receiver, Thomas. And he will have a first down as they're in the field goal range now at the 30. It'll be a Saints first down on a gain of 16 yards. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. So first and 10 now from the 30. Again, they'll throw with Breeze. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Sanders. My next teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. and He's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that and that's what he did. After reviewing the play, this challenge was initiated by the guys in New York taking a look at the play. Less than two minutes to go. Yeah, I'm sure the coach wanted to challenge it, so he's probably going to send the New York office a holiday card. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and ten. 
Breeze to throw again. And that will be incomplete with a clock showing 18 seconds now to go. Brings up a third down and 10 yards to go. Here comes the seventh play now of this drive as this is third and 10. Again, it's Breeze. Smith catches left side. That will be out of bounds as he gets this down about the 21 or 22. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. Again on the play. It's now fourth down and one. On fourth down, off goes Drew Brees, and on comes the Saints kicker, Will Lutz, for the field goal attempt. On the left hash mark, this is a 38-yard attempt. The kick by Lutz is good. And they're back within a touchdown. It's 17-10. to 10. 17. Saints 10. So a late three there, and that'll help as they head into the break. Talk about situational football and something they've worked on since the OTAs and mini camps the previous summer. They take care of the ball, get three points, knowing they're going to get the ball to start the second half. That's the old two-for-one special to finish things off. So just eight ticks remaining here in the first half as they'll kick this one away. Taking it about the one. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Pickens on the return. The Bucks take over first and 10 at their own 22-yard line. So time perhaps for one final kneel down before they take this lead to the locker room. And with time running down, they go down to a knee. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman in our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome, everyone, to this abridged version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. We saw Ronald Jones put together a nice first half. His guys have the lead as we'll hand it back over to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach, appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. This will make it into the end zone. And we will not see a run back here from Harris. Out come the Saints now. They'll go on offense first here to begin the third quarter. We have not seen much on offense from either side. These last few drives, it has been a struggle, hasn't it? Totally, and you're thinking to yourself right now, if you're on offense trying to get things figured out, okay, we self-scout every week in our game plan. How many things do we do at certain times? What are our tendencies? Time to go to some of those tendency breakers and try and create some offense. They always have those in their back pocket, don't they? You have to, and if you don't keep abreast of what you're doing, you lock into a rhythm and make it easy for the opposition. Looking for tendency breakers right now. Now Breeze finding Kamara, and they're able to get this one across the 35. A drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. That's a nice throw there, and he's obviously feeling pretty good because remember, he had a touchdown pass on the last drive, and here he comes out throwing again, and they wind up getting good yardage and a first down right out of the gate. Breeze now on first down. Left side here to Sanders. And able to rip 
rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. A really nice gain of 25 yards. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 39-yard line. From the gun, it's a run for Kamara. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Got seven on first. Here's second and three. Shotgun now for Breeze. Throw left side complete. It's Smith. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the box 23. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. As long as you go through your proper reads and progressions, the drag route can be one of those old reliable plays because usually it's good for a good chunk of yardage as we just saw there. And those guys like it, right? They can get the ball with a full head of steam. Especially against man coverage because man coverage, they're typically running away from someone and not worried about traffic coming out on the other end. Now a first down carry. It's Kamara. A strong, broken tackle on that one. And then they get him to the ground, just shy of the 15. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. They run it again with Kamara. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figured out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. And he stopped immediately there. William Goldston in on the stop. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle. That's what we saw right there. Yeah, that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends are like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. And he'll be dropped at about the 11 after only a yard. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Here comes the eighth play of the drive, and they need a full 10 yards on third down. Breeze now to throw. The Bucks defense stiffens and pushes this to fourth down. But that was certainly an aggressive call and an aggressive play. Instead of just going for the first down, took the shot in the end zone, went for the touchdown. And on third down, they said, forget about the sticks. We want six. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. 28-yard attempt. And what's his kick is good. Cut this lead back down to four now at 17 13. Saints 13. So they've put together a good little drive there, but ultimately stalling out in the red zone. Yeah, I know a lot of people look at it as a little bit of a negative. They didn't get six points out of it, right? Didn't get the touchdown, but that's actually okay. They got three points, able to give their defense a little bit of rest, let them settle down over there. So, all in all, to me, that's a good drive. Field goal wants to kick it away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. 
And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. The Bucks take over first and 10 at their own 20. Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. This has been all that we'd hoped for. Two of the game's all-time great QBs slugging it out in a one-score game here in the second half. First and ten. They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. And a short gain there as he'll get it up only to about the 24. Demario Davis there on the stop. Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, you throw it again, then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set him up. From the 24, Brady. Looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. And he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45 yard line. That one, a gain of 20 and a first down. When you play a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz it because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does. And the best part about that play for him. I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. Fournette, a first down carry. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Shotgun now for Brady. Open man, Gronkowski complete. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Brady going to try and throw on third down. He completes this into the hands of Miller. Now he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. First time they've looked his way in this game. He comes through picking up the first. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag right against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. From the gun, it's Brady. Quickly to Gronkowski, that's called. Three yards the game there, second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Again, it's Brady. He gets it into the hands of Gronkowski, complete. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. That's going to be caught. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Mike Evans. 26 yards. And the Buccaneers here finding a way to stretch their lead. For as big and strong as some of these guys are, especially when you see them in full pads, it is sometimes hard to appreciate how truly fast they can move. That was incredible. And that's the kind of play where you have to kind of catch your breath afterwards to just give me a second here because 
When he shifted into high gear, he was an absolute blur out there. No substitute for speed. We talk about that all the time. The evidence was right there. And if you look at the next-gen stats, you'll see that he topped out at an even 21 miles an hour. Pushes the lead up to 11. So that drive goes eight plays. And it's all finished off with a touchdown by Tampa Bay. Touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. The Saints take over first and 10 at their own 27-yard line. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder. It puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 27. And he'll start with a give to Kamara. He'll have a first down past the 40. And down to the 19-yard line. A big play there out of Kamara. 54 yards on the ground. Trailing here in the third, and that run might just be the spark that this offense needs. And don't you just get the sense that he's going around, not just in the hall, but looking over at the bench and saying, ball, give me the ball. Let me carry this thing home. Field flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. Now Kamara. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Those are the plays this defense needs with the deficit they're facing. It certainly is, and they've got to continue to swarm the football and hope that someone, while they're holding up the ball carrier, can get in there and rake it and lock it free. They need to get some takeaways as well. Breeze on the draw, gives to Kamara. And they've got it inside the 10 at the end. It's a good gain of 11, sets him up first and goal. The running game's played a huge part of getting him down to this point on the field. I say stay with it. Keep pounding the football. Keep driving, keep grinding. Yeah, even down in the red zone, keep going for it. No doubt about it. Dance with what brung you. So three plays already first and goal, and they are wasting little time. Now they'll throw with Breeze. This will be caught at about the six. And just shy of the goal line as he's out of bounds right at the one. A gain of seven that time, second goal. Second and goal at the one-yard line. They'll run it with Kamara. And the avenue collapsed for him as he's going to be held up short of the goal line. He tried to break that plane, but couldn't get there, and that's going to leave him now at third and goal. A couple extra tight ends are in, third and goal from the one. They'll try to run it in. It's Kamara. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown. One yard touchdown run from Alvin Kamara. And the Saints have cut it back within a score. But well, they decided to run it in and got it done on third and goal. A lot of times. 
times that's a passing play. The kicker, this has to come out for the PAT. He can breathe a sigh of relief as well, right? Although I don't know if he's really breathing a sigh of relief. I think he likes to put three points on his ledger. will bring the Saints offense up to go for two here. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. And this one incomplete. So they went for the two, they don't get him. Tough there, good pass, hit the hands, he just couldn't bring it in. And every receiver's coach everywhere, seeing that play, focus, focus, focus. Watch it all the way in and tuck it away. Taken about a yard deep. And he'll be dropped at the 21-yard line. So bringing it out of the end zone proves not a good decision. Loses him about four yards. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go up and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Back now here live in New Orleans. It's the Bucks. They've got the football. They also are in front here on the scoreboard as we start the fourth. At the 29 now, they'll head to the line, second and a yard. This is Jones. And he's going to have just a couple here with a marker on the field as well. Holding offense. Come on, man. Set, go. You better do something. So on the big tight end, hold it. Each and every year, we talk about very few tight ends coming into the league that are polished blockers or asked to do it a lot in college. So it's a constant struggle and a constant fight to learn how to do it without holding. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. Operating from the gun, Brady. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. The Bucks on third down. They have been superb. Five for six to this point. This is third and 11. From the gun, Brady. And that will be incomplete. Brady's pass thrown to the sideline and incomplete. That is three plays and no. It's fourth down. Here's Bradley Pinion now as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. Two yards on the punt, just two on the return. Yeah, 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 and the Saints will take over with a first down and ten. The New Orleans offense set to take over. Their defense accomplished step one of the mission. They forced the punt. Now they'll look to erase that deficit and take a fourth quarter lead. going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 37. Out of the gun, he'll throw. 
That'll be complete to Cook. And it'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. A good pickup there, eight yards on the first down completion. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Now a man open down the middle of the field. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. Good work after the catch, going to net him 23 and a first. Oh, that was a nice job there. Quarterback and receiver reading the pressure that was brought. They both knew it was going to open up the middle of the field. Nice little shake and bake in the line of scrimmage. Got right into his route. And the quarterback hit him in stride, and he was able to run free after the catch. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Breeze now. That's to his running back. It's Alvin Kamara. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Two gain of eight. Brings up second and two at the Bucks' 24-yard line. To throw again on second down. Breeze. That's complete to his running back, Kamara. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Brandon, a lot of times you'll see running backs rotate in and out of the game, whether it's a completed pass, a good run, it doesn't matter. Here, not only does he stay in, but they go right back to him, and he makes another nice play. Back-to-back -back catches. First down, here's the run with Montgomery. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So a decent game, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. Now, Breeze again. This is complete to Michael Thomas. This will be a five-yard pickup as they move it from the 20 to the 15. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. So five plays on this drive, Charles, all passes, all completions. And just like that, they're in the red zone. And don't you think the playbook opens up a little bit more now? Because all they've done is throw the football. If you want to run it now, you may very well have them fooled. Catch here, left side, Thomas. And he goes backwards here, losing yardage back to the 16. Now they're going to be dealing with the third and seven. Is that one officially a loss of one? It looked like the defense, they were ready for that one. Really left him almost no room to work after catching the ball. He could throw every move in the book at him. They were there, and they tackle him for a loss. The Saints on third down. They've had good success, five for eight to this point. This is third and seven. They'll run out of the gun with Kamara. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Saw him through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. way to get the lead here of course with a touchdown and that's what they're gunning for on first and goal try to pound it in Kamara and he takes it across and into the end zone touchdown Saints Alvin Kamara his second touchdown of the night and the Saints have taken the lead he's given him a little jolt just gave him the lead there but 
Two TDs now in the game. And that jolt puts them in the lead. What a terrific job by him. He is carrying the ball and simply saying, I want to win. So now he's hoping his defense has that mentality as they try to hang on to that lead. A big spot now for the Saints as they'll indeed go for two. And they'll turn to Kamara. They're going to keep it on the ground. And he will not get there. He comes up short. And they're unable to push this lead to a field goal as it'll remain a one-point game. the one and he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21 yard line the Bucks take over the first and 10 at their own 21 yard so out come the Bucks now and they're coming off a three and out my friend I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to so something well, else. and maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. On first down, Brady. That's out to his running back, Fournette. And he gets it here to right around the 24 before he's out of bounds. Three yards the game there, second down. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. Looking to throw again on second down. Brady throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Gronkowski, the intended target, third down here. The coverage was good, but I just wonder if they absolutely fooled the quarterback on that play. I think he was expecting something else. Ended up with nowhere to throw the football successfully. The Bucks on third down. They've been very good, five for seven thus far. This is third and seven. And he'll get that to Fournette, complete. No gain at all on the play there, and that brings up four. Three. They couldn't get anything going there out on the right side of the flat of the swing pass. And didn't we have a discussion with their staff about wanting to get the backs more involved in the Big passing emphasis. game? Huge emphasis for this game, but obviously the defense had other plans and really made a nice play. Here's Bradley Pinion now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. Harris now to return. It's a 42-yard punt, but eight on the return. And possession will switch hands first and ten. The offense and Alvin Kamara heading back onto the field. He's already hit pay dirt twice. He's up over 100 yards. He is feeling good. And he's just zipping along today. Everything coming together for him. It's that type of a day that you see a back just kind of have a grin on his face every time his number is called. Because he doesn't feel like there are going to be any lost yardage plays. Nothing but big time positive runs. Making the sideline grin as well. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at the 39-yard line. From the gun, he'll set up to throw. Over the middle to Smith. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for 
from there, didn't it? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. Maybe I go thank the guys on D. Breeze leaves this one with Kamara. Powers through again. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. I'm sure that that's going to be the formula. Just keep the ball on the ground. Keep that clock moving. And when you have the lead this late in the game, above all, stay in bounds. Yes, take care of the football. Yes, gain yardage, but stay in bounds and let that clock tick. From the 41, Breeze. He'll air it out deep for Tyler. Got a man. to the 20-yard line and no further. The Bucks take over first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. And yeah, Tampa Bay trots out there now. There's still plenty of time here in the fourth quarter. In just a one-possession game, down eight. They'll be looking for the touchdown and two-point conversion. A field goal here on this drive does very little at this stage. few better down a score in the fourth quarter than Tom Brady. This is first and ten. Working from the gun, it's Brady. That's to his running back, Leonard Fournette. Oh, Not able to go anywhere that time, second down. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal, don't necessarily need a touchdown. The completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and ten. Operating from the gun, Brady. He's got it complete to Gronkowski, and they're able to get this one across the 35. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. But when you hit him on the move like that, he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam. Oh boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Throwing now is Brady. This into the hands of his running back, Ronald Jones. And a six-yard game gets him right around the 43. It'll be a gain of six, and that'll make it a second down. Second and four at the 43-yard line. And they'll try to squeeze in one more play here before the two-minute warning. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. Hey, 
So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Throwing again on second down. Brady over the middle, and it's incomplete. The way he's throwing the football today, I'm also surprised when he doesn't complete a pass like happened there, but he needs a few more to get his guys downfield. Well, the way he's thrown it leads him to believe that he's going to get those completions, and that means the guys going out for passes, they'll run even harder because they expect it as well. Back to throw. He gets it to Brown, complete. And he's got the first down yardage there as he takes it just across midfield. It goes as a gain of eight and moves the chains. Now you're right on the edge of field goal range. You've still got time, but get up to the line of scrimmage and get set. First down now, but that clock rolling. Back to throw, Brady. It's complete. He's got Gronk. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. That one good for 37 yards. You ask tight ends about their favorite routes to run, and surprisingly, this will pop up as one of their staples because they run so many routes in the middle of the field. How about this one? Starts downfield, bends it to the corner. Great touch on the football, and they turn that one into a big play. And this will be caught. Touchdown. So in the final minute here now, a two-point conversion will tie the game. The touchdown's massive, but now they've got to have two to possibly take this to overtime. So a big play coming now for the Bucs as they'll go for two. Back to throw. Staying on his feet. And he can't get the throw away. He's taken down. And a failure to convert and tie the game. Now the pressure shifts back to the defense. But I think it was the right play. I think it was a right call to try and tie the game there. Kick an extra point, you're still down one. What's the sense? I, I like what they did. So there is still time, a little over 50 seconds to go, but this becomes a critical onside kick. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a camera on this one. In the fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Busy night continues for Camara. And he's got this down to the 35. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in the fourth. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10 the ground Camara and maybe a measure of revenge there he's had his way in this one but this time they get him behind the line you'd have to 
think likely another running play coming here. Second and 11. Camara. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. The Bucs forced to use their third and final timeout as they stop it here with just under 40 seconds to go in the game. Drew Brees with a kneel down, and that ought to do it. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? <laughs> and the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. So this one, a victory here for New Orleans. And they were buoyed, Charles, by a big second half that put this one on ice. So you get the sense that whatever was said at halftime obviously hit home. I think it's a little bit more than that, though. Obviously, there are words that are said, and hey, come on, guys, we have to play better. But sometimes it's just sharpening your execution, sharpening your focus, and maybe doing the things you practiced all week without major adjustments, just doing them better. And that got it done in this one. about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. The Saints are winners here as we say so long from New Orleans.